What's up everyone? So in today's video we'll go over 5 myths about biomedical science. Things that are just not true. Coming up. Myth number 1. Biomedical science is the trash can of failed medicine students. Well, as this might be the case in a first year where you can find many hands raised if you ask the question, did you take the MCAT? Then it's true. But there's also plenty of people who knew exactly what they were choosing when they directly chose biomedical science. I for one was one of those. And yes, in some colleges or universities, people take an undergrad completely in biomed before they go to med school even. But that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But it needs to be emphasized that there are those of there out there that choose knowingly, consciously, directly for biomedical science. Myth number two. For biomedical science, mathematics is less relevant. Okay, so while it is true that you don't need that much mathematics compared to like bioengineer or biomedical engineering, typically every engineering subject, still mathematics is the language of science and you'll need it in biomedical science as well. And I hate to break it to you, but statistics will be very important. I for one, I had a 10 on 20, only passed very marginally, on my statistics exam back in 2008 but I do realize the importance and I'm learning again I'm adding some value to my statistical knowledge and it's necessary because some statistical tests are coming to compare results so I want to know more about that and if you want to become a good biomedical researcher you should too and pay attention in statistics class once you reach that point where you get statistics then I'll help you out. I'll link some statistic YouTube channels in the description below to help you out once you get that subject going. And trust me, it will be worthwhile to have a good basic knowledge on statistics because it will become more and more important, even in biomedical science, because big data packages due to genomics, metabolomics, all the omics and bioinformatics, the data science aspect is becoming more and more important throughout society, so also in sciences and biomedical sciences. So invest in statistics. Myth number three, biomedical science is for introverts. Well, no. So you might have this stereotypical image of someone working in the lab in a white lab coat, working long hours, not talking to anyone, etc., etc. Well, that's nothing more than it is. It's a stereotype. You can find introverts in any layer of society, in any profession, in any sector. There's different types of people and not per se do you have to be an introvert to work in a lab. Because you will encounter people as well, you will have colleagues, you will have uh, superiors, you will need good people skills and communication skills. Take for instance, some physicians or clinicians could be introverts as well and they have to see patients on a daily basis. So the point being, no, you don't need to be an introvert or a secluded person to work in a laboratory. Number four, biomedical science is a worse degree than biochemistry, biotechnology. Not true. I will admit the biomedical science degree deserves more attention, more recognition. But keep in mind that biomedical science is a fairly young study course to take. Because like for instance in Belgium, it was only founded in the year 2000 and what you sincerely must consider and do this if you're still doubting whether to study biochemistry biotechnology or biomedical science take the curricula of the bachelor and master years and look for the overlap there's tons of overlap in biomedical science you get classes like molecular biology biochemistry protein chemistry uh, bioinformatics on the basics genomics and stuff the huge difference that if you're choosing biomedical science, you're directly saying, I'm only interested in the human being and its disease states versus its healthy states and how it molecularly, mechanistically all works. Biochemistry, biotechnology, on the other hand, you also get a basis in like plants and animals in terms of biology. But let me say, for instance, this, if you choose biochemistry, biotechnology, and you're in your master years, at least at my university, you can choose a major to graduate in called biomedical technology. Also strongly keep in mind that it's your base education. You should continue to learn throughout your whole career depending on which job you end up in. And this brings me actually to number five. And myth number five is that biomedical science gives you less job options. Not true. 
So the ultimate goal of biomedical science is that they train you to end up in a lab, typically, be it as an MLT, a medical lab technician, be it as a biomedical researcher when you get a PhD and stuff. But there's tons of other options and that's why I'm doing this right here to inform you guys on the options that there are for building a career. There's different other options and just remember, you are the driver of your career at any point. During my working period in that biotech company, I encountered people from different backgrounds doing the same job as I did in the same unit. Moreover, I came across people that were away from that company and came back as uh, service employees of another company delivering uh, consumables to us. So this one guy, for instance, he worked three years in the lab as a research associate and then he, I met him as a technical sales specialist. So that's a different type of job, a different sector. So keep that in mind. If you want to do something else and you're motivated and you want to put in some effort to learn something extra, you can do that. Take me as an example, for instance, if I wasn't doing this PhD right now, which I had the option for, I was studying now on a three-year track, doing it night school, studying some business economics on the side while doing my regular job. And I think that's still the plan maybe once I get my PhD. We'll see. So I understand deeply that it's maybe confusing, maybe rather elusive. If you're starting to study biomedical science or you're in the midst of studying biomedical science and you don't know all the options yet, well, if you subscribe to this channel, then I will give it my all to explain all the options to you guys and make things more clear because that's what's needed for biomedical science students to know what they can do later on. Another important thing that's coming and I've been thinking about this for a while is to plan interviews with some of my ex-classmates, some of my ex-colleagues who have a biomedical science degree to show you guys where they ended up in, what they're doing now for a job and this could be in line with what was meant as a biomedical science graduate or I'm also open and very open to find examples where they took a completely off the track career path. So guys, remember that you are the driver of your career at any point. If you want something, you have to put in the work, you have to be willing to give something extra, but everything is possible, nothing is set in stone. And with your biomedical degree, you shouldn't worry because there's an expected increase in job opportunities, biotechnology is booming, biomedical companies are getting stamped out of the ground because technology is evolving and biomedical science is becoming more and more relevant because our population globally is growing, our population is getting grayer, uh, new challenges are coming like antibiotic resistance and stuff. So there's plenty of big future opportunities for biomedical scientists. Thanks for watching guys. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with people that you think might benefit from it and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.